Hello, I'm Tim Cornett. Welcome to Life Coach for Dogs. Today I'm talking in defense of positive training. In defense might be a strong word, but I want to state what positive training is and what my interpretation of it is and what it is not. Positive training is based off of B.F. Skinner, who is like an early 1960s psychologist. If you've taken Psychology 101, you know about him. No need. No need to take any further classes beyond that. He broke all behavior down into four quadrants. Positive training simplified is treating, is treating your dog uh, or giving them treats or rewards when they do what you want and managing misbehavior through environment or redirection. I do use positive training in that I don't use punishment on the dog. There's a broad spectrum of positive trainers, right? So there's a very clinical type of uh, positive training where like every behavior is learned from the, the ground up, you know? It's like, so we're gonna take one step, treat. B.F. Skinner doesn't fit into my philosophy at all. This is the problem with dog training as a rule, is basing an entire industry off of a psychologist from 60 years ago. We know a lot about the brain. We've learned a lot about the brain since then. And mostly what we've learned is how much we don't know. So trying to force all of dog behavior through this very narrow lens is a mistake. Don't base an entire industry off of science that old. Like, it's very silly. I view B.F. Skinner and the four quadrants, the four quadrants of behaviorism, as a lens. It's, it's not a model, it's a lens that you can look through. Uh, but it is not the lens that I look through. It's, life is a lot more complicated than that. Dogs are a lot more complicated than that. And by trying to, like, fit dogs into such a narrow lens you're like you're missing so much of their behavior and you're not enjoying time with the dog that's in front of you you're just trying to force it through a bunch of preconceived notions everybody has a different variation on what whatever kind of training style means to them that's kind of why it's important to seek out a trainer that you vibe with and who has who has methods you can follow instead of just following the one that says like, I am the truth and all, of, all of methods are inferior before me. So the reason I'm even like bringing it up at all is that YouTube and TikTok are terrible places for positive training. The voices being represented are actually kind of the opposite. They say that Dogs have a different relationship to pain. They'll say that you need that shock collar. You need that prong collar. That not using that prong collar, maybe that's the abusive thing. And that is, that is not true. You'll see a lot of these places, especially in online sources, saying that positive training is impossible. And that's where I kind of feel the need that I've got to like, hey, speak up. Not only is it not impossible, it is actually the only way. It mirrors where the world is going. They say you shouldn't spank kids, you shouldn't hit dogs, you shouldn't even like tear up the ground too much before you plant seeds. Like a gentler hand yields better results in almost all aspects of life. And in a lot of aspects of life, this is a controversial statement, but you, if you if you power through it like it works and it works really well and it makes sense because you skip over all the trauma in my view and this is this is where the internet fights <laughs> this is where people come at me because you see a really heavy hand being used and then people come in and say I saved that dog you know it's like I did what I Finally, a real, somebody who knew what they had to do stepped in and did the right thing by showing that dog who's 
boss, you know, like finally a hero stepped in. That's just not how it works. It's a lot of show, it's a lot of ego. What really works is, <laughs> this, this will make a lot of sense, is like effort and consistency. That's what works with everything. And does it suck sometimes? Yeah, but it works. Like uh, if you hit a dog or if you shock a dog, what are you gonna do beyond that if that doesn't work? Dogs will learn to play through the pain. Like it's if, if shocking them at the highest level, if yanking on that prong collar doesn't stop that dog, then what do you do? Aggression, or any of these severe dog issues isn't a diagnosis, it's a symptom. Like, you're not aggressive. Aggression is an insecurity and you're just trying to like fill in the gap. Ask me how I know, <laughs> you know? Like, I do understand like the aggressive tendencies, but you don't go to an anger management class and the teacher karate chops you in the throat and says, now show me your anger, you know? That's just not what they do. You got to work through it. You got to work through the thing that's making you angry or anxious or insecure. And that's done through exposure, not hitting. At the end of any training session, not only do you want a dog to listen, like do the sit, down, stay when they need. Not only that's for them, for their safety, for being able to take them out. That's, that's for all the reasons. Dogs need to listen to you. You also need to understand a dog's needs and to fulfill them. And you will also need to understand how to communicate with your dog. And your dog needs to understand how to communicate with you. Positive training has made me a better person. It's cause like, it's all the stuff a therapist says you should do but you're not going to do it because it's like, it's for yourself. But like, in whatever your crazy messed up person head is, like, you're going to do it for a dog. So if a dog is like, having a terrible reaction to something, like, through positive training, you're going to give them the space that they need and the things that they need to redirect those feelings back into positive feelings you know, and pretty much handle things as they come, but also give them the space as they need when they come. And, you know, I wouldn't do that stuff if it weren't for dogs. I do it because dogs need it. If it were me, I would just like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Drugs, drinking, probably. I don't know. We don't even give our dogs beer because we feel bad. What does that say? We just treat them better. So, and then all the stuff happens happens to me accidentally. Interesting fact, actually not a dog eat dog world, you assholes. Right, it have to be. No, it's not. It's birds eat birds, lizards eat lizards, fish eat fish, but dogs get the along with everybody. They're the ones trying to show us the way. My name is Tim Cornette. Thank you so much. Good night.